Okay, YouTube, this is my fourth video in my module on proving trig identities. And in this video, we're going to focus on instances where we want to work on, say, both sides of the identity. Not at the same time, but essentially to build a bridge from one side to the other to prove that they are indeed equal. And we're going to use all sorts of uh, different techniques here, specifically one that's brand new in terms of my modules, but multiplying by a conjugate of a denominator. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one on the left here. We say secant y plus tangent y is equal to cosine y over 1 minus sine y. We want to prove that these two things are equal. And in terms of which side to start working on first, I say, well, probably the left side, uh, just because it's a sum. It's easy to work with sums and differences if you had to choose a side. So let's go ahead and start with the left-hand side. Um, I don't notice anything squared, so I can't do any Pythagorean substitutions at the moment. Uh, and I don't have any distribution or factoring to take care of. So let's go ahead and take a look at maybe rewriting this in terms of sines and cosines. So we say secant of y. This would be the same thing as 1 over the cosine of y, since they are reciprocals. It's a reciprocal identity. We could use our quotient identity that says the tangent. Well, that's the same thing as sine over cosine. So I'll rewrite it this way. And so you'll notice here, if I wanted to add these two things together right now, the nice thing about it is we've actually got a common denominator between the two at the moment. So we could say, well, let's just throw it all over the cosine of y cosine of y. We can say 1 plus the sine of y on top. Okay, So again, I don't notice anything squared. I don't notice any factoring that we could do. I don't notice any distribution. Uh, so, you know, I'm kind of stuck at the moment. Everything is already in terms of sines and cosines. We've got the left-hand side down to this point. I'm going to go ahead and put a box around this and say we're not done with it, but at least for right now, I'm going to leave it as is. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the right-hand side. As far as the right-hand side goes, what I want everybody to recognize is this. We have a 1 minus sine in the basement. And so it's not that it's 1 minus sine. It'd be 1 minus cosine, 1 minus secant, 1 minus cosecant, 1 plus tangent, you know, 1 minus tangent, whatever. Uh, but the fact is it's not squared. Uh, but in a Pythagorean sense, recall that the cosine squared plus the sine squared of an angle always equals 1, and so this is very true also. The sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared, and the cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. And the reason why I bring this up is because the fact is if we were to take the basement here times its conjugate, remember, if you give a, a, a binomial its conjugate is always like a minus b, if we were to take it times its conjugate, you get something where you get like a squared minus b squared, because your middle terms here, you get a minus, you know, minus a b plus a b, those cancel out. And so conjugate pairs always multiply out into a, a difference of squares, and differences of squares look thing, like things like this, okay? So we're going to go ahead and just say, let's look at what happens here when I take the top and the bottom of this expression times the conjugate. So we have the cosine of y over the 1 minus the sine of y. Not 1 minus sine squared, that would be awesome. Uh, so we're going to take both the top and the bottom uh, times 1 plus the sine of y see what we can get to happen for us here. So we say 1 plus the sine of y. In the basement, as far as the basement goes, we know this is going to multiply out into a difference of two squares. We know it's going to multiply out into 1 minus the sine squared of y. But let's bring up y. We say uh, 1 times 1 is 1. And then we get uh, plus sine y minus sine y. So those would cancel when I combine like terms. And we get minus sine squared of y. And on the top, I'm going to make a suggestion to everybody. But we're going to go ahead and leave this thing. We're going to leave it factored. The reason why is because if you distribute stuff, you end up factoring things out again later anyways. You might as well leave it factored now. As far as what we have here goes, though, we could say looking at the basement, we have 1 minus sine squared of y. Well, the nice thing about 1 minus sine squared is we should recognize that 1 minus sine squared is the same thing as a cosine squared. So now we've got this expression, cosine of y times the quantity 1 plus the sine of y is all over cosine squared of y. And so keeping in mind that what I want to get to is this thing right here. It looks like we have a 1 plus sine uh, on the top, and we have like at least a, you know, two cosines in the basement, but we have at least a cosine. How is it that I could get rid of this cosine up here? But the fact is uh, we have a product over this monomial divisor. We could say, well, this cosine right here cancels out with one of these cosines here, and we're left with 1 plus the sine of y all over the cosine of y. So this example, what I wanted to kind of get at was this. Sometimes you can work on both sides and get you know to a certain point where those two things equal each other. So the entire original expressions around this entire path here are indeed congruent. And also this, uh, you know, change things into sines and cosines. See if you can get it to work with you. Last but not least, 
multiplying by a quantity. This is a new idea that we're bringing up in this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the right hand side over here and see if we can get this to work for us. Um, in terms of which side I want to work on, you know, I'm kind of inclined to work with the left hand side. Again, you know, that multiplying by the conjugate thing, I notice that I have a denominator down here. It's just like 1 plus cosecant. It's not a 1 plus cosecant squared, it's a 1 plus cosecant. So maybe, maybe we'll start with this. We'll just go ahead and take the top and the bottom times the conjugate of the basement and see if we can't get a difference of squares working for us here in which we could apply a Pythagorean substitution. So uh, the conjugate of 1 plus cosecant is 1 minus cosecant of theta. We have to take the top and the bottom times this conjugate. Okay, so as far as the bottom goes, let's talk about this. We know it multiplies out into a difference of two squares, so we get one minus cosecant squared of theta. And on the top, we said we'd mentioned at least uh, that we want to leave this factored. It'll be easier to work with here. So now I've got this, and we say, okay, so well, what can I do with this? Well, maybe, maybe we could work some sort of like Pythagorean substitution into this. Uh, I'm not quite sure, so maybe I could do a Pythagorean substitution for my cotangent up top, or, or we could do a Pythagorean substitution down in the basement. Well, 1 minus cosecant squared, what Pythagorean identities exist? So we say this is the one that always sticks out in our heads, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Uh, our other two trig identities, our Pythagorean identities, we get from dividing either all of the terms by a, a cosine squared or a sine squared. If we were to divide everything here by a cosine squared, well, cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. Sine squared divided by cosine squared is a tangent squared, and a 1 divided by cosine squared, well, the reciprocal of uh, cosine is secant, so we get secant squared. Furthermore, we know that uh, if we divide everything by a sine squared, cosine squared over sine squared is a cotangent squared. Sine squared divided by sine squared is 1, and we get 1 divided by sine squared is the reciprocal of sine squared is cosecant squared of theta. I don't need to put that in. I, I was just putting these all in. Uh, what kind of substitutions could we maybe rock here? Well, I noticed that uh, a 1 minus cosecant squared down here would uh, would play into, say, this identity right here. Uh, I know that if I put this one over here, we could at least rearrange this to say cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared minus 1. I need a 1 minus cosecant squared. So in order to flip the order of this around, kind of like we've done in the past, is we could factor out a negative 1 and say this would be the same thing as 1 minus cosecant squared. But we'd have to fact, you know, like multiply everything by a negative one kind of sense. We would have to take everything on the left times a negative here. So essentially, we could say that uh, the one minus cosecant squared of theta is equal to a negative cotangent of theta. So substituting that in, we have this now. We say, okay, well, cotangent squared of theta on the top times one minus cosecant of theta. This is all over now. We could say, well, if I switch the order of these around, switch the order of these around, that would be the same thing as a negative cotangent of theta. And the nice thing about this expression is that my cotangents cancel out. And so I'm left with this. 1 minus cosecant of theta over negative 1. Okay? Uh, we could really just say that's negative 1 minus cosecant of theta. And that would be the same thing if we distributed the negative 1, for instance, we'd get like, uh, you know, a positive cosecant of theta, sorry, cosecant of theta, plus a negative 1, sorry, minus 1. Switch their order around. What I'm trying to do is show that this equals the right-hand side here. So maybe now I'm stuck at this point, so I go work on the right-hand side. But what I want just, what us or want you to notice about the right-hand side is we have a monomial divisor. And any time we have a monomial divisor, we could split up the top into two different expressions. So in this instance, I could say, well, this is 1 over the sine of theta minus sine theta over the sine of theta. And that would be the same thing as cosecant of theta minus 1. And that's cool because, hey, that's what I was trying to show, is that these two expressions originally are equal by taking this long and winding road. Cool. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you need to use uh, multiplication by a conjugate to get done what you need to get done in terms of Pythagorean substitutions. Cheers.